Let, if I can, let me let me say we too. We we had talked a little bit about the importance of the a center of town, and that's I love that topic. And I guess if I can think about that topic in relation to what some of the people who have been here for a while say is that there's not enough appreciation or education for new people here. So they see a, a pressure between. I'm I'm hopefully I'm capturing it well. The problem is a, a pressure between the Ojai that we would like to preserve, that means not just the architecture, of course, but the quality of life, versus newer people who are coming, who are here because they like what they see here, but then also possibly want to change things in some ways. Do, is that the pressure that you're yeah, feeling? I, is that I there? think it's, okay. um, PR is really important. That's, yeah. that's, it's everything. I mean, you, you want to, you can talk. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's not presented in a way that makes sense, even if we have all of the facts behind us, it's, it's not going to go forward. And so much of it has to do with education. And yeah. I think that's something that um, we do, we do, we don't do as well is is getting in front of our message. Okay. And because so much of it is having to wait until we get to a, a council meeting, our meetings are televised. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what we're discussing. Mm -hmm. So all of this chatter <coughs> happens before we get permission to get out there and talk to people. Yeah. So all of a sudden the message is already gone. Yeah. We didn't have any control of it and then we're just playing uh, catch up and, yeah. and spending so much time on the defense. So I think that's um, What's the solution to that? Well I think Oh you're gonna get to that. Okay. I, I think yeah. that I had mentioned this before and I probably should bring it up again, is mm -hmm. that there should be almost like the welcoming committee. Yeah. Where we there's a commissioner from the arts from from mm -hmm. Parks and Rec and you know probably not planning but maybe from the HPC mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a couple of community members mm -hmm. that um, work together yeah. that in, in an ad hoc where yeah. we can talk about just education. I mean, yeah. the future of anything to do with keeping our town special, whether it's mm -hmm. in, in the arts, whether it's Parks and Rec or, mm -hmm. or the Historic Preservation Commission mm -hmm. is exciting the next generation. Yeah. There's, so um, getting in and, and getting the schools excited, yeah. uh, providing opportunities for the schools to um, visit, to, to go on walking tours, to, yeah. to you know, um, I put it out to visit our jail, you know, to just mm -hmm. to do things mm -hmm. that, um, that start conversations yeah. every year that we open up the jail. Mm -hmm. And um, every year, Brian dresses up like a, a prisoner. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you... <laughs> You know, people have ideas of, oh, teenagers or kids, mm -hmm. but they're, they're not just in there clicking selfies. Yeah. Never. Mm -hmm. They are always asking the most intelligent questions of anyone. Cool. Way more than the adults, or more uh, than, than not, are telling you their story of them or a relative they knew that stayed there, which is always uh -huh. really interesting. Mm -hmm. But asking questions about how long it's been, when was, what was it like, and all of these questions are coming from the youth. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that um, the future of the preservation of Ojai mm -hmm. is exciting the next generation. Yeah. And I think that we do that by, um, if, you, if you have kids who are learning about it, they bring it home, they talk to their parents. Mm -hmm. We need more community outreach, mm -hmm. uh, not so much a welcome basket, just for the new people, but mm -hmm. also the people who uh, are here now. Mm -hmm. I think that there's so much that's yeah. just so unusual and incredible about this town that, mm -hmm. that everyone should know about. And, yeah. and, uh, so I think that the kids are, are the secret there. I like what you're saying. That sounds really good. Too, yeah. Part of the issue that you bring up is yeah. that people that have come before us over the years have done such a good job of keeping development to a minimum. Mm -hmm. And that now a lot of times people come and they go, this place is undeveloped. You know, mm -hmm. you have to, they see opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but yet the people who live here say, well, wait, no, it's undeveloped because that's the way we want it. Mm -hmm. you know, we, I remember a new neighbor I had a few years back who said, you know, I really need some freeway to get up here quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, you don't really know the whole history of that and how hard You're not the first fought, to think of that idea. <laughs> how hard people fought to keep the freeway yeah. out. But for some people, it's like, well, you know, if you had a freeway, people would be able to get up here a lot yeah. quicker, and uh, they don't really understand that part of the uh, Ojai <laughs> way, the Ojai spirit, is preserving that that quality of life that we've had 
Is it like it's paving paradise and putting it in a parking lot? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, everybody yeah, can yeah. be there. <laughs> it is. So uh, to go along with what Craig's saying, we have actually in our interviews uh-huh. that w- we've interviewed people who were Ojai businessmen mm-hmm. and were in favor of putting the freeway through. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so it's, we don't mention who they are. Okay. <laughs> no, that's but, that's and it wasn't the HBC. We had nothing to do. Yeah. No, this yeah. was just a neural history <laughs> interview. But uh-huh. but it's interesting to hear people and their vantage point I understand. Uh, on putting that through because I can't even imagine well, that. that. It's funny. I wasn't expecting to talk about this, but I'm glad we are. That the tension between keeping things the way we have, what we love about it, and then the idea of something new where some identify a need, let's say like a housing project. If we say, okay, we're, we're, for example, we're looking for more affordable housing for, you know, to see, because we have this declining middle class. And so then how, how do we work that problem into the, the need or desire to keep some preservation? It seems to me that's the tension that everybody's grabbing. Well, I, yeah. I don't I don't agree with everything that has come forward with yeah. projects, but yeah. I was, uh, I did like the project that the Becker Group came through mm-hmm. with the uh, 510 Ohio Avenue, which was uh, the old Combs Welding. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, they did take advantage of the uh, affordable housing right. to build right. some units, but they put them in the back of the property right. and they're kind of hidden a little bit. Right. They, they, they achieve, they 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 have more density. Yeah. The front yeah. building, they've added yeah. a little bit on, but it, there used to be a metal structure back there anyway yeah, where right. Combs kept all of his yeah. equipment and everything. So yeah. I think uh, that was a good example, but there were people that objected to that yeah. because they wanted to see it just left kind of the way it was. But, uh, uh, that's a really wonderful it's a, it's example, a actually. Drone. It's a, yeah, a remote control airplane. Oh, it is. It's a drone that's making it. time. Well, there's a lot I could do, actually, with sound to take out a frequency, so I'll work on that. I, hopefully it'll be okay. Um, but great example on that one, because I guess I've always, used, there seems to be a bunch of unused equipment in the back of that one property you're talking about. And so if you say, well, what's the point of leaving it the way it is? It's not doing anything, and it's actually sort of ugly behind there. It kind of looks like it's sitting out there by itself. Yeah. You know? It does with the way of the culvert for this. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, no, that's that's helpful. Um, I don't want to lose sight of this, but can we talk about the Mills Act? Because that wasn't something I was aware of until I spent more time on your webpage. But can somebody tell me, describe well, the Mills Act? Yeah. I will tell you that there are 12 properties, because I checked with... Uh, Checked with Mara, and she gave me a list of the... Uh, well, 12 the, properties use the Mills Act. 12, take 12 of, of the existing landmarks of a Mills Act. Okay, okay. Right. and then say what that is. Do you want to... It's, mm-hmm. it's a state law that allows local agencies to adopt it. The local agency, whether it's the county or the city, have to adopt the Mills mm-hmm. Act program at the local level mm-hmm. that piggybacks on the state law that allows them mm-hmm. to uh, give property tax reductions to properties that are historic and they leave it up to the local agency to define what a historic property is as long as it meets general characteristics of historic like Ojai only allows uh, Mills Act benefits for landmarks Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but other cities will allow it for structures of merit or for contributing properties to a historic district. Mm -hmm. So our hope would be if we got the downtown historic district that we could have the city at some point Mm -hmm. widen that. And what it does is they can get up to 40 to 60 percent tax reduction. And uh, it's good for 10 years, but it Mm -hmm. always extends 10 years ahead. So Mm -hmm. if you were to get it today in 2024, you would have to keep it and the city would have to honor it for 10 more years. Okay. Now next year, that extends out to 235. And then, so it's always 10 years ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. so you can't just say, I don't want to be in it anymore. Yeah. Or the city can't just say, oh, we need more revenue from the property. So that's the obligation of the so, owner with the break. And, and, and it's, so it's earmarked yeah. for uh, repairs, rehabilitation. Mm-hmm. So what I was saying, if, if the contributing property, let's say one of the places in the, in the downtown historic district on yeah. Ohio Avenue, 
and you have a, um, a really great tenant it's a gallery yeah. and you have a leaking roof and yeah. costs are going up and they don't want to put that on to the gallery mm -hmm. and they but they can't afford to um, do it themselves because of higher costs if they were in the mills act and they had this plan of this year i'm going to do the roof this year i'm going to do this window this and, and you you earmark those funds instead of taking them yeah. in parking taxes you're using them to uh, yeah. Keep maintenance. You're able to keep but your property. But they have nursery. to follow the secretary's interior right. statements. It's a much okay. more stringent okay. uh, scale. You know, they. Uh, that's why when you get a Mills Act property, you're a little tighter with your expectations of them because they are getting public benefit. Well, if I'm hearing you right, it would not be for the person who's simply looking for a tax break. It's the person who also is invested in keeping the property up because they're exactly. going to spend more money on it. Because they okay. have to have a plan to sense. use it. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. A plan to use the revenue that they've retained. And it can okay. be for renovation, yeah. but it can also be just for maintenance. Yeah. You need to maintain these difficult mm -hmm. wooden windows mm -hmm. that were from the 19th mm -hmm. century, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to cost you more money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and where that where we've seen that come mm -hmm. up on a public basis is, mm -hmm. again, where we're, we've talked about the downtown historic district and mm -hmm. talking about the Mills Act. Mm -hmm. So people are like, oh, they're going to get 40 to 60 percent reduction. Now, I, I've investigated that, and that is what everybody says, 40 to 60. That, that amount is actually calculated by a gentleman at Ventura County, mm -hmm. who I'm looking to bring up as a guest speaker oh, at uh, our great. Historic Preservation Commission. Because uh -huh. yeah, all assessor. I can see, everybody yeah, says 40 to 60, but only the, the people. Okay. Uh, and it's a strange formula. I wonder what the formula is. <laughs> That's okay. We don't have to get into that detail. The, the, it has to do with the rental value of your home. Uh -huh. So if you're living in your home, you would have to figure out, if I rented the home, uh, that kind of thing that's you know been shared kind of, with us yeah, interesting and if, if you've lived in it for a long time you don't get as much because of the proposition uh -huh. so that's right. It's a that's right. we talked about that separately we were saying if you've been there for a long time your break is not so significant if it's a generational <laughs> yeah. property yeah because don't be looking for a big yeah. one yeah. no that's interesting it's still a benefit but just not it as is. dramatic as if you bought so, the property so today. people what people said to us was well then if they're doing that if they're getting a 40 to 60 percent reduction in their mm -hmm. in their property taxes how much is the rent going down uh -huh. and we heard that well, when we went to the city council and you made like, the point they're using yeah. it in repair and so yeah. we as dina said have to explain to them that it's a it's a reduction for them to maintain their property which is then a benefit to the whole community no, it's, and then hopefully yeah. that rent doesn't go up because they didn't have those incurred those yeah. extra costs so it, it, it's yeah. a win-win for everybody well, when you when you and i were talking about this separately you've probably seen those emails where there's a a, a town in Spain that is abandoned, and they'll say, we'll sell you the town for 10,000 euros. And you think, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> no, read the details. You have to build it up, maintain it, renovate it. It's, it's not for a cheap, uh, it's not a cheap solution. Oh, and then if you, <laughs> if you mess up, if you're the owner, uh -huh. and you okay. decide one day without permits or anything to take off three rooms and do all the stuff, yeah. The city can make you pay, or the county can make you pay back all the debt. <laughs> oh, well, that's important. Yeah, hopefully nobody went to that late. So you have to you have to toe the line a little bit when you go to the military. There is something yeah, else ahead, that is um, that we finally, over the last few months, got um, uh, inked in, and that it's solidified mm -hmm. is the California Historical Building Code. Okay. And that is something that our landmarks can use and. Um, Hopefully, it's a pretty low um, hanging fruit um, okay. option, so hopefully it will also be for the um, structures of merit and it will be for contributing properties. Okay. Um, I think it automatically is contributing properties, actually, oh, great. in the downtown historic district. Okay. But it's it's um, it's just a, a, a not having to necessarily get your property up to code if it's going to affect uh, the the historic mm -hmm. features of the house. It's, it's a more lenient building code. Okay. Um, I think you could probably explain it. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Well, place. it's like, yeah. uh, you know, the code has a lot of things that you have to do, mm -hmm. even though it may not directly make your house safer, but mm -hmm. it's to improve safety. Like mm -hmm. the fire department wants you to put sprinklers. Yeah. In. Well, if it's a historic 
property, you may not have to. Or the uh -huh. the ADA may say that you have to have a ramp on the front door, the and you may be able to put there. it on the back door mm. because uh, the front would be compromised. Interesting. Or a, a rule, a, a local ordinance might say your your uh, window has to be no more than 12 inches from the ceiling or something. Okay. Some I'm just making that up. Right, right, right. And uh, you don't have to follow that. You can follow the historic, so okay. you can renovate your house in an historic way. I like that. Uh, so, so, so yeah. when um, our landmarks go to the city, yeah. whether it's them or their contractor, they right. can now ask, and they need to know that. So, I'm, we're working on a letter that's going to be mm -hmm. in our next meeting mm -hmm. to just make sure that they know that, to ask for that because okay. it might um, having a more lenient building code for historic property. The most successful. Um, mm -hmm. The most successful preservation is always going to be a give and take. It's going to be. I'm just going to think that I've seen yeah. that very expression. Yeah. So you're offer you're offering a benefit to somebody who's going to take that, take advantage the of state that of designation. California. Yeah, yes. no, that's wonderful. And, and there's the also the state historic yeah. tax credits in this mm -hmm. federal for commercial properties that you're making money off of. Yeah. If you fit all the re requirements and you're accepted in <coughs> the program, you can get. A, a ton of tax credits yeah. that are credits, they're not just tax deductions. And right. I've kind of wondered why some of our properties that are landmarks haven't taken advantage of that. But yeah. And once again, I think that's education that's too. That's education. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I'm seeing that in so many areas where maybe there's ordinances that people aren't aware of, policymakers even, they just don't know that it exists, and yeah, anyways, right, there's a lot to know. Right now, if you're in the mm -hmm. arcade and you have to get something done and there's five mm -hmm. overlays, and the last thing you want to do is go, okay, now what do I have to do? Right. So I think that's what you know, Craig was working on, is like, how many, can't we just, if you're part of the downtown historic mm -hmm. district, mm -hmm. uh, why can't there just be one overlay that, in, yeah. you know, for the downtown historic district? And a lot of cities, which is what we're hoping to do, is to either reduce or eliminate fees to come to the desk and ask for something. I love that. So, you know, That's because great. they're taking care of this property, mm -hmm. it's keeping Ojai, Ojai, mm -hmm. and in turn, there's these benefits for you. And, and uh, that's... I love that. And there's also okay. conservation easements. Mm -hmm. uh, the Fairburn Estate, I believe mm -hmm. it has, I don't know how many acres there. But they put mm -hmm. so many Wonderful. of their acreage yep. into a conservation easement, mm -hmm. which yeah. is Southern a huge tax mm -hmm. break. And then you just have a local, I think the Land Conservancy mm -hmm. monitors it. They okay. go up every year to make sure they have kept it open space. Oh, great. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for people. Yeah, the easement, yeah. I think, is the one that comes in from Creek Road. Okay. I just, I had only two things in whatever you want to also talk about. Just the briefest, just the history of the Terramina area. I, when people come here, they ask, why does this have a designation of any kind? What kind of community was it planned to be? It is just a for you, because ah. you made the comment about me always being prepared. Yes. So there's Terramina. Okay. Signed by Helene Vashen. This is a funny oh. thing uh, when okay. you think of, of Ojai. Yeah. And you're going to say, where's your historic district? Everyone who didn't know would automatically think it was just the downtown because right. it's obviously the city. Then it's like, no, you go on the web page onto the city, it's like, what? Where is this? And it's very, you know, it is surprising, but okay. they came to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So they, so, and we talked about this last night. So mm -hmm. up there, you want to do a historic district on the way they did it. You have community, the group, mm -hmm. who go said, okay, we want to do a historic district. Again, not everybody agreed. They went mm -hmm. out, they got the signatures, mm -hmm. talked to everybody. They had a really weird voting system okay. allocated back then, which has since been fixed. Okay. So they came, they got the threshold, which is 50% plus one, and then they came to the Historic Preservation Commission. Okay. Okay. Uh, John Lambert was one of them. Mm -hmm. We had known uh, John because John was uh, part of the uh, library, the Twice Old Tales. Mm -hmm. Friends of the library. Yeah, yeah, yeah friends, friends of the library. Yeah. And so they had come to us wanting, when that was originally landmark. So John had some experience with the Historic okay. Preservation Commission. So they came in, they had done all, the city had verified that that was there. Uh, it was all mm -hmm. done before we got here, as opposed to the historic district we're okay. doing now. Okay. And uh, there was some dissension. The hearing was held. We it comes to the HBC. We held a hearing. Room was packed. When was that? Remember? 
I don't know what this is. It's in, if you look at the landmark thing, oh, I think okay. it will tell oh, you. It's not, on here. it's not that important. Oh, I'm just important. curious. But I'm guessing. 2015? And it was before like 10 years ago? Yeah, five, ago. seven years ago. Okay, well, five, okay. And, and so, right. uh, again, I had a meeting, went through all that, and went through the voting system, went through the pluses and minuses. They uh, finally, we agreed on the HPC to make that recommendation mm -hmm. to the city council. Then, and then it was pa passed on to them. Okay. Same type meetings, the city council agreed for it to be a historic district. Now, and the, why Why is it historic? So the reason, yeah. what well, goes back to the, mm -hmm. the Terramina community who yeah. first came here for it. Well, it was uh, part of Katona. The esophagal you know, society. Of Katona, yeah. And it was to be a uh, Actually, a philosophical retirement mm -hmm. uh, and they had one designer that designed it to look like French Norman buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, as it turned out, the, I don't know if it was the California Supreme Court, but they ruled that they couldn't mm -hmm. uh, not sell to people who weren't theosophists. Okay. Uh, so it just yeah, became a general that. community mm -hmm. that people could live in. Mm -hmm. um, and the people who lived there, uh, they, this lady wrote the whole history of it, mm -hmm. which was a pretty compelling history mm -hmm. of the area. And um, they wanted to keep it uh, as it was. Yeah. They were worried because they I think there were some lots there that were empty and there was some things going in the works that they thought might detract from the integrity mm -hmm. of the of the community, mm -hmm. so they applied to be historic. Okay, so if you go into Terramina, you you know there's the loop. If you go straight on the loop, if you look off to the right, you'll see that there's some prefab homes in there. Uh -huh. Okay, I think did they those. get those built? Well, they were already built. Oh, they were already. They were already there. I think Susan mm -hmm. lives in. <laughs> it's one oh, of right. Those. Okay, um, and so so the rest of the community was looking at, is this going to? T you know, come and invade us because, as Craig said, there are mm -hmm. vacant. The biggest vacant lot is that one right in the middle of the circle, mm -hmm. and so there were parts of the community that wanted to see that. There, there are still parts of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the person that was leading that charge on their end, you know, see, I see her every so often, mm -hmm. and she still wants to talk about can we bring low-income housing into that area? Yeah. And, you know, I always say, hey, you know, you can bring anything to VHPC mm -hmm. and then we'll yeah. we'll listen to what you have See, to say. See, one thing that's, that's interesting that you might need to know is that yeah. in what you're running for mm -hmm. is that when you pass a law in the city, it has to apply to everywhere in the city. Right. You, can't, you can't make it for this this neighborhood in particular. Yeah. But when it's a historic district, you can right. yeah. uh, if it's based around the history. So That's very helpful. Uh, so you couldn't just outlaw uh, modular buildings citywide. You'd have to do it citywide. I get it. But if it's historic and that would interfere with the historic mm -hmm. integrity of the community, then there's more I get it. Once again, we're going to talk messaging. Yeah. Because um, yeah. there were a couple of things going on in Terramino. Mm -hmm. One of them was paint color. Mm -hmm. One of them was a window. One of them was a driveway. I saw and that. they would come to that front desk mm -hmm. and they would be told, no, you can't, or why, or, and they would be sent away, and and nothing was coming to the HPC. It was going, because the city has their laws of how, mm -hmm. but unless um, it was, it, it didn't come to us, and yet we were getting the bad rap. It was like, why would we want another historic district? Look what you, people can't even get a paint color. Mm -hmm. And it was a funny thing with the paint color. It was it was an update to a book where they just changed the number of the color, I, and so it was like the same color. I read but, about that. <laughs> yeah, and, but we weren't hearing about it yeah, and until yeah. we started talking about the district, and we realized, because I have no idea why they're unhappy people in town. You know, mm -hmm. What is? And it was we had it wasn't coming to us okay. unless it comes to our meeting. We don't know about it, and so mm -hmm. that was just something that yeah, that's helpful. also Good made example. it seem like look what they did with that. They couldn't do this. Why would we want to mm -hmm. let them have any? And oh, and another thing. <laughs> so, oh, go so, ahead. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, so, so this finally came to my attention. Yeah. And because I have an excellent relationship with people like John Lambert, who uh -huh. was the twice old so, and lives yeah. right there. Yeah. Robin Gerber. Robin, yeah. Uh, and I immediately called them and said, what's mm -hmm. going on and what, what's not happening? Because, you know, these are people that we, mm -hmm. you know, look out for. Yeah. You know, we don't want, as Gina said, we don't want people from a, a yeah. successful, happy, district 
you know, not being taken care of yeah. because, you know, word gets out. And that's just not the way we do. I love our scale that it allows that. Individual people, you know, so when you said, so how is Termina and I wrote, uh, wrote down happy? But mm -hmm. I did call John Lambert big before I got here and said, John, are we happy? <laughs> so I left a voicemail message. But, uh -huh. but this is the important thing. So yeah. right across the street from John Lambert, they were the, on that house, they were being told they had to completely redo their windows. Mm -hmm. and, were, and if we had known what we knew then, they finally worked it out, we would have said, what's the historic building? Got California it. Historical mm -hmm. <laughs> Building Code said. Right. And, and they would have been able to save money and, and put it back in. I think they had a couple of out. their members of the Taramina community come to our meeting not too mm -hmm. long ago and speak and mm -hmm. say how, what a positive influence it has had on the community. Oh, that people, that's what it. people don't realize is that when you're part of a historic community or a historic building, people tend to rise to the occasion and they, they want that. their to improve their house to fit in with that. And, so it's had a positive effect. I've noticed people who are newer to the valley, when they see this is Besson Road or there's Besson Meadow or Besson Hill School, and then they, if they have some history, they say, is that Annie Besson? Yes, it's Annie Besson and so on. And it's, it's another way that Ojai is unique, not simply another small town, but something right. really extraordinary that's drawn a lot. My last question, unless you have more, I just wanted to ask about the OUSD property, that's the whole front of OUSD downtown is designated, right, as we've talked about. And so when I looked through the Ventura Star articles when Andy Cantwell was the superintendent, it looked like it was not smooth sailing for a while. Yeah, if you want to talk about that, how, how did that happen? So so when the uh, when the Nordhoff Grammar School, mm -hmm. and, and I, uh, I always declared this, uh, I have a personal interest in it, this mm -hmm. is where my father-in-law Mm -hmm. Grew up and went to school, mm -hmm. and so I went to, of course, did the HBC meetings, but I went to all of the school district meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, we had, first of all, we did a historical report on that because, and I told them, we we asked for that because people would come up and going, is this a historic property? Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a historic resources report, and so we asked for a historical resources report because the city had asked for or was looking at that property, the city actually paid for that. If an individual comes to us and wants to do a landmark, they have to pay for the historic resources Got report. It. In this case, we were the ones that were essentially pro the proponents, so we paid for that. Okay. So then there were countless meetings with the city. I sat with Andy in two different meetings for you know, six or eight hours. Mm -hmm. um, there was a <laughs> Uh, kind of, this is our property, you can't do anything with it, and the city, like, well, you're in our city, you have to. There's different things that they did that, mm -hmm. that were different back then. There was a rub. There was uh, Bill Wyrick and Sousa, mm -hmm. not as commissioners, did a public meeting at, at the Arts Center for ideas. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. The rest of the council was sitting on the back row, not talking. Okay. Um, and Before they weren't on, they weren't on the council at that moment. They so were on the council. Oh, they were. Time. They were. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, okay. uh, so there was that that rub, oh. and uh, and so it came before us. Okay. We uh, we uh, met uh, mm -hmm. the HPC. Craig was on it at mm -hmm. that time. Darwin was uh, the chair of it. Was to take essentially the the after the discussions were to take the whole property. Mm. As a landmark. Okay. Uh, so we went. We made. We decided on that. We went to the city council, and the council basically, uh, uh, I think, was more Randy Haney, mm -hmm. who ended up narrowing it down to what it is to the front. Okay. That front, the part along Ohio Avenue. Right. Right. Well, and, what they said was that they would landmark the part along the front, but they would reserve the right to come back and do more of it yes. okay. at a future time. Yes. Because when the historic report was written, the, uh, the consultant said the whole thing. In fact, the <coughs> kindergarten building back there is one of the more historic. Annalisa, that yeah, back one? That yeah. back one. Oh, yeah. It was by a very famous architect who really oh. pioneered the modern okay. school. So oh. anyway, it's not officially a landmark, but it is. Um, the back building. 
Yeah, it yeah, has I, been. I know, so, so, uh, so all of it, and yeah. it's called the Ojai effect on that uh, school in the back. The lights, that the um, lighting that they did for the windows, you know, up above. Oh, um, the Ojai, the uh, the Ojai shelf. Which yep. was the design that the oh. uh, the architect was Maynard Linden. I've seen it. And yeah. his first one was in Miner's Oaks, Miner's okay. Oaks yes. Elementary. And he also did Miramani and he and did Oak View. Oak View Oak Elementary School well, also my, has my son was at UCLA. He, has, he was a building at UCLA and he was mm -hmm. like, I love this building because you never need lights and you never mm -hmm. need air conditioning. And it's always cool and it's always light. Incredible. What he did yeah, is the, wow. the the north facing windows yeah. are these big open windows. And on the south, where you get the direct sun, there's that uh, overhang that sticks out, and then clerestory yeah. windows above it, and then where the clerestory windows are, these louvers that bounce the, uh, I don't even know if the louvers are still there, but they bounce the light down in so that the light comes in, the, the windows below are protected, but the clerestory windows take the light in wow. and give all this ambient okay. light. So I came to the city council meeting, yeah. again, a uh, raucous place, um, uh -huh. and uh, so uh, we made our proposal, the city whittled that down to, mm -hmm. as Craig said, so the front part mm -hmm. is landmarked, and the other part was reserved if we wanted a landmark at a time frame. And now just the L up Montgomery also? Just, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. Okay. the administration well, it's building. A, it's a U, right? There's the... Well, well, there's there's the courtyard. Yeah, no, it is a U tech. Yes, it's a yeah. U. Yeah, yeah, that's and the I've bottom seen of the, the original U plans okay. that the architect drew, yeah. and they they built it in stages. Uh -huh. But they built the part along Ohio Avenue and first, and then they added okay. the part along Montgomery, and then they added the part in the back. But the original concept was a O, was the whole the, o. 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 like a courtyard in the middle or something like. That. Yeah. So, but you're saying that they they carved out the U, right? Or no? They, no, so what was landmark is just the, the front part, okay. just the part along Ohio Avenue, mm. all the way to the street, mm -hmm. okay? So people are like, oh, we need to take these trees out. Well, guess what? It's part of the landmark. The pepper but trees. The pepper it's, trees. It's the L, right? It goes out to the it, it, it is a little bit of an L because it's the administration building that kind of extends mm -hmm. a little bit farther okay. in there. Okay. okay, so that was all done. It was landmark. Mm -hmm. We put, we paid, and we have a beautiful plaque up there. Mm -hmm. uh, they said... Uh, why do we need that beautiful plaque? Because we want to tell the story on this historical exactly. building. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we paid, arranged with them the location, kind of a negotiation mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. I think Andy said, yeah, we got to get this right because I have to take it to the board. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, yeah. I mean, what we don't want mm -hmm. is for it to sit there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not preservation. Preservation right. is adaptive reuse. Yeah. Yeah. There, are, there are, and that's something mm -hmm. that, when you're a landmark, developers that are comfortable mm -hmm. doing, like I just got back from Portland, there's Kennedy School, there's, uh, I mean, there's so many examples of, of taking schools and turning them into other things. Mm -hmm. uh, we, when um, we get a landmark like that, when it's mm -hmm. a public building, um, a lot of people think that we just want to keep it frozen in time. And, and that's not successful. That's hugely that's, important. Mm -hmm. That is, it's really important. Um, I've, when, Craig and I served on the board at Elliott Charter. Uh, Cheryl, Dr. Cheryl Knox was mm -hmm. on our board as well, and I feel like I have a, a good relationship with yeah. two. I, I told her that I'm happy to help in any way. I know these two have also reached out and gone to this to, uh, the school board meetings. Yeah. I know there's a lot of hesitance thinking that we're trying to like mm -hmm. pull something, like you know, hold on the reins there, and mm -hmm. all we want to do is go, well, there's, there's developers that we can get from the state of California that we can have the, like send your way there's so the thing about preservation people the people who are in this field are happy to get on the phone it doesn't matter how high up they are you mm -hmm. dial their number they just pick it right up mm -hmm. because they're in it for the same reason we are to do preservation work to mm -hmm. do the best work they can mm -hmm. so there are um, developers that work to with landmark buildings yeah. to do adaptive reuse to do retail I and mean, anything I mean, mm -hmm. that, that you can think of yeah. and there's also there's there's money there's federal money state right. money there's grant money there's um so many things that could be done I love it. um you know all we ask is that they stay with it i mean they and that's something that's thoughtful i mean people just think oh it's the school needs the money they should just be able to tip it 
just like the arcade, the, the burger mm -hmm. left, all of a sudden that building gets down. People are going to be like, what I did totally we do? That. Because that's of part of the, the story of Ojai. It's part of the look of Ojai. Yeah. So there's so much to be done with keeping that in the front, mm -hmm. keeping that look, and still being able to give the community something really spectacular. Well, they're, they're leaning so, into what you're uh, saying. They're planning on it. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so let me jump in. So Please. Craig and I went to the first meeting, then I've gone to multiple other meetings. I mm -hmm. saw you at the informational mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, flash forward, we have a whole new, a brand new board. Mm -hmm. There's years between a, a brand new supervisor. Mm -hmm. uh, Cheryl, I know she lives around the corner yep. from yep. me. Um, and, and so and they are, each time they talk, they yeah. and they've all said this, they are dedicated to keeping the yeah. the uh, part that's landmarked and to keeping the quad yeah. in place yeah. because Love it. as uh, Phil said, I want what's Ojai centric here. Yeah, yeah. putting in time, helping. Okay. Uh, any anything that we can do, we're always there, um, yeah. and I think that's something that um, that's not. It, it, they were talked about. What was it? The three two the. The, the ad hoc that they were building, it was like three, two council members. Oh, three, it was a two and two. two, and two. two. Yeah, so and it was, was going to be Betsy and Leslie and uh, board members and Phil days. and Cheryl. And I kept okay. saying, oh. and, and, but my oh. and didn't get in there because oh. I was like, we're okay. just here to. <laughs> I love that. I'll tell you after we film. <laughs> what I think been on the commission for a number of years, uh -huh. I think I can safely say that uh -huh. the air on the side of the, uh, the owner, you know, to try to help them to do what they want to do. Yeah. That's Especially good to hear. With the downtown yeah. historic district, yeah. that kind of coincided with COVID. And we're watching, you know, the restaurants not be able to open stores. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we know that the pressure that is put on not only the, the, the store shop owners and the restaurant owners, but the property owners. Yeah. And, and and then after that, going into the recession, and then all of a sudden, all costs going up. I mean, there's, there's the last thing you're going to do is, is burden anybody. And and that is that is why we're taking so much time. Yeah. That's why we're taking so much time. Like, oh, we're just spending so much time in education because we know we're going to these places. We're hearing that success rates, and it's all built on what we can provide. I do think working. PR is an issue because of what you both just said, the shorthand misinterpretation is leaning towards this preservation without adaptive reuse and against the owner, generally speaking. What you just said is the opposite of the <laughs> quick shorthand misunderstanding, which I'm sure you've heard before. Exactly. But like yeah. I said, yeah. we, would, we wanted to do everything by the book. Yeah. And one of the things by the book was not do any sort of public outreach until we met in a joint mm -hmm. council meeting mm -hmm. with, with the city council and got approval to move forward. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen because of COVID. Yeah. And so, okay. but on our meetings, our Zoom meetings are televised. They're, they're up on, yeah. on yeah. and so everyone knows what we're doing, mm -hmm. but we don't have permission to do outreach. So the people mm -hmm. who uh, didn't want this to see happen mm -hmm. were able to get messages out so much faster and so much more efficient while we're just sitting here going, twiddling our thumbs and then trying to play, you know, um, defense. And mm -hmm. we, we that's not the position I want to be in. I want to be in, mm -hmm. what can we do for you? How can we make this good for the community, good for the property owners, good for the, the, the restaurant and, and if it's a, you know, land, if it's a, not a uh, residential, but if it's in the core downtown, it's like we, this is this is for all of us, and this is for future generations. Mm -hmm. And we need to make really good decisions, and we don't need to put burdens on anybody. Got it. Yeah, I was going to say that the the, the the other campaigns, let's say against some kind of those movements, they don't have the rules you have, so they can post immediately and not fact check. Yeah, and I mean, just <laughs> weird things with uh, Brown Act. It's like mm -hmm. even on Facebook, if if um, like. If there's somebody who puts up something and then Brian comments and Craig comments, I, I if I it. comment, then all of a sudden it's it's it's, it's a, a serial meeting. A so, serial meeting. I understand. Yeah. So no, we I, have I to be it. really careful. Of course, that's true. Uh, yeah, and so we see the stuff and we want to correct it, but mm -hmm. we know that we may not be able to because we're not going to be able to continue. So it's yeah. it's difficult because yeah. I do feel like education is everything, and 
from a lot of things beyond our control, we've just done a terrible job trying. We just mm -hmm. we've, we played catch up in our messages, and I, I think that um, I know we're in our bubble, and mm -hmm. we think that everyone's going to be like, "Oh my gosh, this is course," you know. And when they're not, we're just like, "Huh?" But mm -hmm. the reasons why they're not are usually um, very quickly explained, and, and mm -hmm. here, here's the facts. Here's what mm -hmm. we want to do. But um, I mean, there's a few people who are just going to be like, absolutely not, no right. way, right. And, and, and that's fine. Right. But I can imagine that the general population of Ojai would be against taking our downtown no. core and making sure it's just protected for, for future generations. My hunt is most people are for it, very clearly. They want that. It's when it gets into little specific projects that's where people might wonder. But in general, that's the feeling. Yeah. Well, I hope this video helps in that regard. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. I know Thank we went you. over time, but I appreciate it.